Hello, greetings, and welcome to Dividend Blasters. This is our 59th video. Our topic today is strategic dividend investing. Which one of these gets your investment dollar? Head to head, is it the Home Depot or is it Lowe's? That's right, we're going to do a quick comparative analysis between these two awesome investments. What are we going to do? Well, we're going to look at some key metrics. We're going to do a comparative analysis and look at dividend performance. We're going to look at the compound annual growth rate around key financial areas like revenue, net income, total assets, and levered free cash flow. We're also going to look at profitability. How do they stack up against each other? And we're also going to compare their debt levels and how they are doing. Before that, we're going to provide you a little bit of basic information about both companies so you can get a little bit of context. First, a disclaimer. I am not your financial advisor. The purpose of this video is for information and education. It reflects my own personal opinions. Please do your own research and consult a financial advisor prior to making any major financial decisions. So you can see they how they stack up side to side, side by side. These companies are very similar. These are both home improvement chains. They're big box stores. They're retailers. They sell products to help you improve your home. They also sell services as well. A lot of installation, a lot of information support as well. Um, one is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. That's Home Depot. Lowe's is headquartered in North Carolina. Lowe's is an older company. They were founded in 1921. Home Depot, much younger, founded 1978. What you're going to see is that Home Depot is a much bigger company. Uh, they got maybe twice as many employees, and the market cap is about two and a half times the size. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. Some high-level metrics. Home Depot, they have about $157 billion dollars in sales, their operating margin, around 15%. Their return on invested capital is pretty high, 44.6%. That's pretty impressive. That's Home Depot. Lowe's, their sales are a little less, so around 98 billion, so less than the 157 billion of Home Depot. Their operating margin is 13% versus Home Depot's 15.3%. And the return on invested capital, 37%. So recall that Home Depot's is about 44.6. It's a little bit of context for you. Let's look at some corporate facts. You can see the tickers side by side. Uh, Home Depot is HD, Lowe's is LOW. These are both part of the consumer discretionary sector. So if you recall, there's 11 industrial sectors. I'm sorry, 11 sectors. They're both part of the consumer discretionary sector, and they're both in the home improvement retail industry. As I mentioned, Home Depot is bigger. They have many more employees, 471,000 versus Lowe's, 244,000. I also mentioned that Home Depot was founded in 1978. Lowe's was founded way back in 1921. Home Depot is headquartered in Atlanta, Georgia. Lowe's headquartered in North Carolina. I'm providing their website, so if you want to do additional research, you can go right to their websites. Their closing price as of yesterday, September 26, Home Depot, $302.54. That's right, $302.54 for Home Depot. Lowe's, Lowe's, $208.54. Home Depot is a much more widely traded company. 1 billion shares out there. Lowe's, no slouch, 577 million shares out there. So Lowe's has about 60% of the shares that Home Depot does. Uh, I did mention market cap. Uh, Home Depot's is about two and a half times the size. Their market cap is 302.56 billion. Home Depot's a big company. Lowe's is a big company, but again, it's uh, less than half. It's about $120.35 billion. 
Uh, you, you know what? You look at that closing price. You also look at the number of shares. That what that is what drives this. Okay, so they got more shares. They got a higher price. That drives the market cap. Uh, the PE is interesting, and I'm looking at the forward PE. Uh, Home Depot's is higher. It is an eyelash under 20, 19.87. Lowe's is a cheaper stock. Their price to earnings ratio is 15.53. Now, you know, on the surface, I'm looking at this and I think, wow, Lowe's is a better buy. And uh, full disclosure, I own shares of Lowe's. I do not own shares of Home Depot. But coming into this, I'm looking at this very objectively. I want to know what is the investment that should get my investment dollars. That's my approach here. So anyway, those are some corporate facts. This is for additional context. I'm going to give you some more basics. I'm going to touch on this a little bit more. Market cap, I already mentioned that Home Depot is about $302 billion. Lowe's, smaller, $120 billion. Price return. So this here is just solely price appreciation. I'm only looking at the last 12 months. I'm looking short term. Uh, I'm going to open up that time horizon when I look at total return. But short term, 12 months, Home Depot has 12% price return. Lowe's, about 10.5%. So out there in the market, in the buying and the selling, Home Depot is outperforming Lowe's. That's not the full story, though. You need to dig a little deeper. So we're going to look at total return. Total return, again, as I've mentioned in other videos, is price appreciation and the dividends. We look at dividends because dividends are important if you're a dividend investor. And if you're holding for the long haul, it adds up. We all know about the dividend snowball, growing your holdings. So if we And we're going to look over a variety of time horizons here. So the last 12 months, Home Depot has outperformed Lowe's. Total return, 15.1% to 12.8%. So dividends do make a difference, okay? Because, you know, we just saw, we saw in price return, it was a little bit further of uh, a gap. Here it's closing a little bit. But let's open up that time horizon. Let's see what happens. So let's look at five years. Whoa, what do we got here? Total return for five years. Home Depot, 64.5%, and I see Lowe's is beating out Home Depot for five years, 98.33%. So this is a combination of two things. It's it's dividends. It's also price, price performance over that longer time horizon. One year really doesn't mean anything when you are an investor. That's one thing that I've learned in my 30 years of investing. Got to hold for the long term. As you get closer to retirement, you change your approach. But while you've got time, make time your friend. Let's look at 10 years. Lowe's is still ahead, 413% versus 399.5% for 10 years. Total return, okay? Let's look at the max time frame. And here, um, and I'm using Seeking Alpha, max time frame is 30 years. So total return, lows, 10,181%. That's a big return. Home Depot is great, 5,660%. They're both great. But I'll tell you, if I have to choose one versus another, I am choosing lows right now. But this is all past. We also want to look at what we think is going to happen in the future. So we have to look at lots of things. We've got to read them tea leaves. So that's just really more for context and background. We're going to look more closely to what we think could happen. So we're going to look at these two companies head to head. First, we're going to look at dividend performance. And I'm looking at some forward metrics. I'm looking at the dividend yield. Right now, Home Depot has a higher yield, a slight, a slight increase over Lowe's 2.73% versus 2.09%. But look at that dividend growth rate, and it's the five-year Kager. For Lowe's, 19.97%. Home Depot, 15.57%. You know what? These are both awesome dividend growth rates. Uh, you know, as a dividend investor, I want to see uh, a dividend yield plus a dividend growth rate when taken together 
at the aggregate level, 10%. That's my own rule of thumb. Uh, these are both killing it. Home Depot is, you know, almost 19%. That's phenomenal. Lowe's is over 22%. Uh, but for the Kager, I, I would give it to Lowe's. For the dividend yield, I'd give it to Home Depot. Uh, you can see the annual dividend yield uh, dollarized. Uh, that is really driven by the forward yield percentage plus the price of the stock. So it's nice to know, but I'm looking more closely at the percent yield. Uh, the dividend payout ratio is really a safety metric. Uh, you want to see something less than 60%. I like uh, lows because I think it's safer. It's about 31%. Uh, Home Depot's is safe. It's 51%. They're both safe. Um I would probably, and this is just really a matter of preference. Some people will disagree. I like lows. Um, dividend growth streak, it's lows. Okay, 59 years. This is a dividend king. They have continually increased their dividend 59 consecutive years. Home Depot is doing great. 13 years. It's a younger company. They haven't even been around uh, 59 years. So they're doing well. Okay, but I'm going to give the edge to lows there. They're both quarterly dividend company. So who is the better dividend investment? Right now, I'm giving it to Lowe's. I say Lowe's wins, but that's not the only metric we're looking at. We're going to look at other metrics. We're going to be really objective here. Let's go to the next one. So the next one is compound annual growth rate. All right, we're going to look at revenue. We're going to look at net income. We are going to look at total assets. We want to see how these things have been trending for the past 12 months, okay? Uh, and we're looking at the three-year, the five-year, and the 10-year. And you know what? I'm, I'm showing them side by side. And for revenue, it is Home Depot uh, easily. You can see them side by side. Let's look at net income. And, and I will tell you that it's not even close for three years. It's Home Depot. Um, for five years, it's still Home Depot, and for 10 years, it's Home Depot. Uh, total assets. Uh, you know what? I don't know what's going on with Lowe's at three years. They have a negative three-year total asset uh, growth rate. Uh, so they have been decreasing their assets. Um, we'll get to that when we start to look at things like debt levels. Uh, ten, uh, five years and 10 years, it's Home Depot. Um, I'm going to show you a few graphics here, but right now, the way I'm looking at this, it just looks like these, these kegers for revenue, net income, and total assets, it's looking like Home Depot to me. Uh, here's the net income margin, one year. Uh, you can see that orange line is way above the blue line, so it's looking like Home Depot. That's one year. It's the net income margin for five years. It's still higher, and there it is for 10 years. There's a lot of space between those two lines. And here it is for the max. So it's a little bit closer, but it's a longer time horizon. So which one are we going to choose for growth? Who's growing better? It's Home Depot. I, I think that it's decisively and uh, decidedly Home Depot for compound annual growth rates, for revenue, net income, and total assets. Now let's look at levered free cash flow. And, and I got to tell you, this to me is one of my favorite <coughs> measures. I like to see how a company is doing with their free cash flow. And I want to know what that is after they've paid their obligations. What's left over uh, after operations? Well, um, when you, first thing that you notice when you look at three years, they both have negative cash flow. Uh, this to me is undoubtedly because they were both adversely affected by COVID uh, over the last three years. Home Depot minus 7%, Lowe's minus 14% for the last three years. I'm going to basically say set those aside. COVID is uh, a historic outlier of an event. Let's open up the time horizon a little bit. Uh, when I'm looking at five years, it's very close. Um, Home Depot, 8.56%. Lowe's, 8.67%. Uh, 10 years, Home Depot, 7.7%. And Lowe's, 5.32%. I would actually say 
that it's looking more like Home Depot for levered free cash flow. Wow. So, you know, when I did this analysis, it was kind of surprising to me because, as I said, I am a shareholder in Lowe's. And I think Lowe's is a great company. I think it's a great dividend investment. But sometimes it's really good to look at other metrics above and beyond dividends. Let's press on. Let's look at profitability. So we're going to look at gross profit margin, net income margin, levered free cash flow margin. So what is levered free? We already talked about levered free cash flow. What's levered free cash flow margin? Levered free cash flow margin is the levered free cash flow as a percentage of revenue. So to me, that's important. I want to know how much cash is available as a percentage of sales revenue. That's fascinating. I like to look at cash from ops, cash per share. We already know that low, uh, Home Depot has maybe 60% or 40% more shares outstanding than Lowe's. Uh, and we can also look at net income per employee. So I would say gross profit margin, they're both about the same, 33% in some change. Net income margin, uh, it's Home Depot uh, by a factor of 4%, 10.5% versus 6.5%. Uh, Levered free cash flow margin. Wow, it's Home Depot again. 8.23% versus six and a quarter percent. So that's telling me that they've got approximately the same gross profit, but better net income and better cash flow after paying all their bills and their obligations. Cash from ops, well, we know that Home Depot is a much bigger company. They have significantly more cash, but they have more sales. You kind of need to look at that uh, relative to their expenses as well as their obligations. That's why I love levered free cash flow, levered free cash flow margin. Uh, cash per share is interesting. Lowe's has much better cash per share, uh, more than double, $6 versus $2.81. Net income per employee, they're both high, I think, uh, but Home Depot's is better, 34,000 per employee versus Lowe's, 24,000. Per employee, let's look at some profitability graphics that are related to these. So levered free cash flow margin, as I mentioned, it is Home Depot. And you can see there's a lot of space in between that orange line and that blue line for the one-year time horizon. Uh, Five-year time horizon, um, it's basically uh, a little bit narrower. One thing you'll notice is that these metrics are really trending 12-month metrics above. But the graphics uh, are over the longer time horizon. So when you go from one time horizon to the number, you're going to see the same. Uh, you're going to see the same uh, figures: eight point two three percent and six point two five percent, because those are trending twelve months. But the graphics show the longer time horizon. So I would say pay more attention to these graphics here. These come from Seeking Alpha. And they're they're pretty reliable. Let's go here to the ten year time horizon. Um, Still some space. You do see uh, in 2022, Lowe's did a little bit better than Home Depot, um, but it looks like Home Depot really arced up uh, in 2023 here towards the far right. And in the max, it's a little bit closer, um, but it's really Home Depot, really kind of above and beyond. Uh, in 2016, they kind of uh, crossed a little bit, and then, then again in 2020, um, but it's really, you know, 2022, it's back to, back to Home Depot. So profitability, I'm saying it's Home Depot. Let's look at debt. So remember, Home Depot is a much bigger company. They have much bigger sales revenue. They have more cash. <coughs> um, they have a slightly higher dividend yield. I'm just kind of going back and and tying all some of these things together, uh, the dividend growth rate is superior with lows. Well, let's look at the debt. Long-term debt, they're both about the same, $36, $37 billion. Interest on long-term debt. Wow. Now, this to me is a discriminator. Home Depot has about $125 million interest they pay on their long-term debt. Lowe's 
1.14 billion. That's a lot more. Uh, when I look at that, I'm saying to myself, Home Depot is in a better position to service their debt. Long-term debt versus total capital ratio, Home Depot, 92.7%. Lowe's, 152.46%. So that tells me that their long-term debt is very high. It's one and a half times size, one and a half times the size of their total capital. It's huge. Debt versus cash, uh, free cash flow uh, ratio. Um, you want to see a smaller ratio here. Home Depot's is 5.9. Lowe's is 10.17. My major takeaway here is that as far as debt levels, Home Depot's in a better position. And so for debt, I'm giving it to Home Depot. So who's the winner? The winner overall, in my judgment, and I'm surprised to say, and I'm an investor in Lowe's, is Home Depot. Uh, I would give the dividend performance to Lowe's. Uh, but in the other three categories, uh, the compounded annual growth rate around revenue, net income, total assets, levered free cash flow, Home Depot. Profitability, Home Depot. And debt levels, I'm going with Home Depot. So the winner is Home Depot. Again, this is my own independent analysis. This is my opinion, um, but that's what it is. So I would thank you for joining us today. <clears throat> I hope you found this to be informative and educational. And I would kindly ask you to give us a like, subscribe to our channel here at Dividend Blasters, and share this video with a friend. You can also follow us on Twitter at DividendBlast99. I'm also on Instagram at Dividend Blasters. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Until our next video, take care and God bless.